Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, it's the Ramble. See, do you see what it says in red? That's me. I'm Alex, and we'll be here until midnight tonight from the East Coast of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, there he is out in, uh, let's see here, Las Vegas, Nevada. Where the only way you make money in Las Vegas is when you get off the plane, you walk into the propeller. Now there's, I have a there, there's an old joke because who walks into a propeller anymore? No, I don't know. That's true. Yeah. You know, I went to the Hard Rock Cafe Casino. They had a Jimi Hendrix uh, slot machine. Yeah. I played it. The little arm was a Stratocaster neck. I pulled it. I got two guitars and an ambulance. I lost. Good night, everybody. We'll be here all week. <laughs> Enjoy the candied squid and the varnish bottle blow. Yeah, right, exactly. So, uh, how you doing? I, uh, I you, uh, you sent me a note saying, I don't know if I can do, I might be able to do the show today. I but, can do yeah, it. I don't know how sharp I can be. So, you know, I just yeah. had a tooth for yank yes, last night. It was, uh, which tooth did oh, they, man. which tooth did they pull? The last, uh, that was the next, it was the last one on the bottom, uh, on my left side, right here. You can see a little godfather cheek over here. It's a little swollen. Yeah. You know, too- are you Tom? And uh, it's been killing me forever. And the one dentist didn't want to pull it because my blood pressure was too high. So I went to another dentist, and they said your blood pressure is high, but not that high. Whoops! Oh God damn! What the hell happened here? Now he lost his. Now we lost. We, 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 well, here we go. There you go. Just uh, what, what rest it against something or something or another. What the fuck is going on? There? Please stand by. Do you remember when they used to do that on TV? They don't do it anymore. Please stand by. The please stand by sign came up a lot in the old days of television. Yeah, we're having tef- technical difficulties. You don't. <laughs> these are things. These are things we don't have anymore in no. our society. The sign. And you don't hear. You know what you don't. You know what you don't see anymore on TV. Test patterns. Well, test patterns are. A thing of the past. Although we know there are test patterns that are used internally, but they're uh-huh. they're not the pattern. Remember the pattern with the Indian in the middle of it? Sure. They don't use that anymore. No more. That was only for That's... like four eighty lines on the screen or five ten, I can't remember what it was. And those those little lines that came out from the Indian those were to test the resolution. If you could see all the lines at that point, you knew what the resolution was. See, they put another Indian out of work. Thanks, Joe. It's your fault. Oh, let me turn on my light too. Back there, see. Hey. Turn on the light. Anyway, so, so where was I? So, so uh, uh, they had the test pattern, and yeah. uh, then they came went to color bars. That's that's the new test. Those pattern. are pretty. Yeah, I well, used to adjust the tint and color on the TV to make them change. And when I was nine years old, we had a brand new color TV that, that would entertain me to no end. Yeah, you wanted to make everybody purple. Yeah, it's like you're first the green, I'm <laughs> the purple. <laughs> I'm having fun. But anyway, I mean, those are things. Those are things that don't exist anymore. Test patterns don't exist with the Indian in the middle. You don't oh. hear. You don't hear a station go. Please stand by. We're having technical difficulties. Yeah. <laughs> they just they just go off and you wonder why. Okay. Exactly. They don't even have the courtesy of telling you they're having technical oh, they difficulties. Care. They don't care about us. And uh, the thing that you here's here's one that you remember, I'm sure, but doesn't exist any longer. You ready? Yep. It, it's uh, this is a WPIX in New York signing off for tonight. <laughs> no more. And then bam, da 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 da, and then airplanes <laughs> flying <laughs> everywhere, and then they went. Well, now, first of all, yeah. Ooh. that happened like anywhere between one and three o'clock in the morning, depending on the station, right? Yep. They went off the air. Yep, for all night. And like then the, the next morning, six o'clock. We now WP. resume our programming with the modern farmer. Yeah. 
Yes. An hour and a half of clutch cargo cartoon. Yeah, we have uh, uh, a great uh, um, welcome to another broadcast day of WPIX. At time for sunrise. And semester. once again, once again, you had to hear the damn Star Spangled Banner. I don't know what the Star Spangled Banner had to do with signing on and off. It begins and ends everything. Everything starts with the Star Spangled Banner. Don't ever forget that. <laughs> You know, but, wow, anyway. wow, but, wow. But, but these are things we don't. Uh, these are things we don't. Uh, we don't see anymore, or hear anymore of. You know. So. Yep. They, uh, they come, they go. They're extinct, like dinosaurs. Well, dinosaurs I feel. You through. know, I am a dinosaur. I really am a dinosaur. There's no question about it. Perhaps uh, I'd like to be a pterodactyl, but I can't fly. So <laughs> I, but I, I, they're my favorite dinosaurs. It, basically, I'm a dinosaur. I'm one of uh, I'm a, maybe maybe a triceratops. With triceratops, I try something, try anything. I'll try yeah. it twice. Anyway, uh, I'm loopy today because I took my nice pill last night and I haven't had any coffee. Oh, yeah. Uh, you coffee. have coffee there, right? Let's see what we got here. Let's oh, hold on. Oh, what do I have here? Da 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 da. Mmm, good coffee. Maxwell House. What does Jack. it say good on your cup? House. Keep calm and what? It's my it's my it's my wife's uh, cup. It says keep calm and sparkle on. Then sparkle it's on, yeah. But it doesn't matter who drinks all because I'm a heat man and I'm drinking my coffee. That came from that came from World War Two, if I'm not mistaken, that, which was W W I I. I didn't know that. It wasn't though it was England. It was it was what does it say on there again? Uh, stay keep calm. Keep calm and sparkle on there. See, keep calm and carry on. Carry on. There you go. Yeah, uh, was the was the motto during World War Two in in England? They were they had it together. They had it together. So, oh, listen, yeah. so tell me technically, how are you doing with your computers? It's still down and out. Oh, my friend almost got us on. He got kind of into that zip code, but didn't quite make it. He put something into in the screen, and all these little letters and numbers appeared, and we almost had it, but we didn't quite get there. So we're still praying. So that's I why wish I, I were there. I could probably, I could probably get you up and running in about an hour. Well, you could probably get me up and running in about a minute if you were here. I don't know how to do it. Though. All you got to do, all you got to do is, uh, for for instance, let's say the hard drive is good, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, it just fucked up or something. I think it's probably your hard drive that's gone, and you need a new. I hard it just drive. needs a password for some reason. It, it well, forget exist. about forget about the password. Just reinstall the operating system onto that <laughs> computer. <laughs> Uh, and you can do that online, you, you know, just reinstall it. And what will happen is they'll say, what do you want as a password? And you put in what you want as a password. You've yeah. lost everything else. I don't, I don't have anything to save. Okay. Then just do what they call a, a fresh install, full install of the, of the, of the operating system. And it's like, it's a new computer. And then you just take it from there. But why you're trying to, what, what what are you doing? What what are you what are you what is he doing? What are you doing? Hello. What are you doing? Hello. No. Here we go. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy. We lost it again. What what do you do? What, do you, what were you doing? What were you doing? You were losing me. Well, you there? Okay. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Can you see me? Boy. You know, at least at least you're technically proficient enough to use your iPhone to get to me. Okay, that's a, that's a miracle in itself. That's a man. miracle. That's amazing. In, yeah, I mean, but when it comes to bubs, forget it. I can't even get him to use a phone. No, no. So I I have to I have to put up a picture of bubs, and nah. do the audio. By a voice of Larry Bubbles Brown, yeah, like some astronaut yeah. you're talking to on the moon or something. I think I think he doesn't want to do Zoom because he doesn't want anybody to see what he looks like these days. Yeah. We all know what he looks like. I imagine he looks okay. You know? Yeah, he ain't hurt nobody. He looks like a white guy without a chin. What do you want? Yeah. yeah white guy without a chin. Looks like E.T., yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Phone home, phone the punchline bubbles. He, he does kind of look like an alien, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. He's from another planet. Yeah. But anyway, so uh, what, what's your life like lately? And I always ask this because I have nothing else to ask. What's your life well, like? Well, I'm broke. I'm broker than Tina Turner's nose on her wedding night to Ike. But I, I got work coming up. And uh, I got a tooth pulled yesterday right there, right there. And uh, here I am today. I'm just How did you there. wind up affording having the tooth pulled? My, well, one dentist 
would take the insurance, but he wouldn't pull it because he said my blood pressure was too high. A friend of mine recommended another dentist who wouldn't take my blood pressure, but she did anyway, but it wasn't too high, so she pulled it. I, I've had and teeth my, pulled. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I've had teeth pulled, and I've never once had them take my uh, blood pressure. Do it now. I don't know why, but they do it, and mine's kind of high. So the first guy in the insurance took it said, no, I can't do that. You might die. I want to die if you keep the friggin' tooth in here. Take the tooth out. I'll, I'll walk out of here. Now, were I'll you, die outside. Were you, having a, then, uh, were you having a major toothache there? Oh, it's killing. It's like, zzz, yeah. little light zzz, goes through the temple, and the other guy forks off and goes through the eyeball. Zzz, zzz, well, and they yeah. gave me oxacillin, amoxicillin. Yeah. To take the pain away, and it worked. But then I ran out, and they gave me more. And I said, "I got to get this tooth pulled." Finally, yesterday at five in the afternoon, they did the job. Well, the amoxicillin. Wait a minute. The amoxicillin was an antibiotic. Yeah, it's an antibiotic, but it took the pain away. So yeah. I know it did. But the, I'm still taking it because it was. Infected. So they pulled it. So they pulled it. They uh, pulled it. Yeah, I had I had them pull a tooth. I had them pull a tooth up here. All right, and and I, I went to the uh, to the dentist. Uh, and uh, they, they said, you got to pull the tooth. So I went to this place to have it pulled. There's a pull your tooth place. <laughs> okay. And uh, I, I, um, they so. pulled it and it was, it was fine. It was, you know, a very easy pull. It was a tooth that was, had gotten completely loose because it was yeah. just oh, bad, cool. bad root canal thing. Yeah, like so, anyway, yeah. so they, it healed up. And then I went, well, I got a new dentist and I went, said, I'm coming to you. And they said, why? I said, I want to get a implant for this tooth. Okay. So I went and I got, they said, well, okay, but first let's take some x-rays. Two and a half years later, ah. they started work on the implant. Because Whoa. we have to take care of this, and then we got to take care of that, oh, and you got to take right. care of this, and you got to take care of that. And before you know it, I'm still got this hole in my mouth, and I'm feeling like a Trump voter. You know? <laughs> I, you know, I could storm the Capitol, and they go, oh, welcome, old, you have one tooth missing. That's <laughs> fine. King of the hillbillies. <laughs> well, I'm not king of the hillbillies. King of the hillbillies misses this tooth. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing, and doesn't, <laughs> doesn't do anything about it. I mean, if I got a tooth here pulled, I would immediately get oh, an yeah. implant or something to fill it in for the time being so I don't look like a moon tooth today. <laughs> Of a radish in there, leave it. <laughs> it falls out. I put some celery in there. I mean, I don't understand why people get lose a tooth in the front, and then they do don't do anything about it. I know they think they. they I don't know who's going to know this. There's only one tooth. That that's the one tooth I think that has to be done. You know, I think we should have we should have national like insurance for people's oh, mouths yeah. because let me let, let's say you lose your front tooth. Now you go to apply for a job. What chances do you think you have of getting that job with a front tooth missing? Well, if it's in Long Island City, you'll get it. But other than that, forget it. Well, I mean, if it's like in in in, in Arkansas, maybe, yeah. you know. I'd like to be the president of our bank. We yeah. want to deal with wood chips and toothpaste. Yes, and you, want, you want to come join us as a teller for our bank? Oh, yeah. and you're missing a front tooth. Well, we'll, we'll get back to you. Yeah, so we'll get back to Because it. if people come in and they want to do business with you, all they're going to do is keep looking at the goddamn tooth, you know, right? So you have a pain on your shirt, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it doesn't doesn't make sense at all, you know. Well, you, Mike, I'll start out as a teller with all the way down to a customer. <laughs> but anyway, so you so you had the tooth pulled. and had the tooth pulled. Oh, that take They had to put all the Novocaine in the world in me because it was it was a hot. She said it was a hot tooth that was infected, so it was oh, killing me. Oh, because it was infected. But normally, yeah. do you know it takes less Novocaine to pull a tooth than it does to fill it? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't get to that part in the uh, home dental. Uh, now, now that you've done the process, I'll tell you. You know how they pull a tooth? They don't pull a tooth. Do you ever do you ever take a nail out of a uh, out of a pe out of a board? It's basically oh, yeah, the same yeah, process. The what they do is they get underneath it and then they go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, here, crack, crackle, crack. No, crack. no, it doesn't crack. It just comes right out. It's like pulling. Um, it's like pulling a nail out of a out of a piece of wood. Oh, mm -hmm. this one I had to cut in half uh, vertically to get it out. Oh, they really? got one half out of the 
You got the other half out, and I'm like, oh, it hurts, it hurts. So what but are you going to do? Are you, you're not going to get an implant. You can't afford that, right? No, it's in the back. Fuck it. Nobody can see it. <laughs> yeah, so the only like reason, mine, mine was in the back, too, but food kept getting stuck in there, and it was just, it was oh, annoying. It was yeah, annoying. It was like wax my gums. So now I have this big fake tooth in there, and it's annoying. So, yeah. Hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Oh, what do you think of that, Muddy? Oh, my God. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, one less toothless Stephen Pearl. Thank you, Stephen. Two, two brush now, one less two to see. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen Pearl. Bye. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Stephen. Good to see you tonight, and we'll see you next week at some point. Yeah, let me turn up my mic a little bit so that you can hear me more than you normally hear me. There we go. Got everything going here. I do everything. I'm chief cook and bottle washer around this here joint. Oh, hey, listen, I got something to show you tonight. This is this is kind of nice. Uh, I, uh, um, I I set up a camera in the other on the other computer in the other room, and then I stuck my uh, webcam out the window, and this is what is happening live here in New York right now on my corner of a 14th, uh, excuse me, is it, uh, it's 116th and uh, 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 7th Avenue, or Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, which I don't ever call it, I call it 7th Avenue. But uh, we had some snow. It's, it's kind of dissipated now. It's going to be very warm tomorrow. So, But I'm also playing that for all you people who watch us, who are watching us from Texas, to let you know how very nice it is here <laughs> compared to what you got out there. Okay? All righty. Let me see here. How Do we have any people ready to go here? Oh, we do. Okay. All righty. I just wanted to check and make sure uh and i will start admitting them all oh look who we got here we we even have somebody who who has been uh, in the storm let's uh, let's get away from there okay and uh let's go here okay and there we go you got uh, we got charlie wallace good for you That's charlie you're gonna have to tell us about your adventures in a second here okay all right Okay. And uh, we got Trucker Steve. Trucker Steve looks like he's at home right now. Okay. And uh, uh, there's uh, there's Alan uh, sitting in his uh, room. Uh, what do you? Which room are you in there? Is that your office? That's your office. Okay. Sorry, I had some food in my mouth. Yes. I'm opening, it's my office. I'm opening up my Pellegrino. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. I got mine here. It comes out of the tap. Water. Ah. <sighs> Mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. I got love in my tummy or whatever. Anyway, how you all doing tonight? Let's find out what happened to Charlie. <laughs> Our first cup of coffee since Sunday. Really? Oh. Okay. Now, when did you get your electricity back on? I got this afternoon. Uh -huh. It was only 40 degrees in my apartment. Oh. Oh. I couldn't come out for about four hours. Hmm. Well, your senator should have just taken you with him. Uh, I don't. You know, Ted Cruz I'm, I'm, is I'm an vacation. asshole. On vacation, what? Ted Cruz is an asshole. Of course, Ted Cruz is an asshole. <laughs> Did you expect anything less out of him? No. Nope. Okay. He's yeah. fucking tone deaf. He he just. Yeah. I mean, what he did was just terrible. I mean, you know, it's just not. It doesn't. It doesn't send a good message out to your uh, populace that uh, this is what they should do in times like that. You know, don't you wish you could have gone Four to Cancun? Don't you wish you could have gone to Cancun? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Four days in the dark. Four days in the dark. Really that bad? Yeah, I had to cover up the windows because it was it got down to nine degrees now you know and no I, heat i understand it happening where you are because that's <laughs> not that's not a civilized part of the world but uh, no no contingency plan uh, yeah how's your food but in your fridge yeah. everything okay 
I don't know. Some of it might have. I, I think uh, the stuff in the refrigerator is okay because, I mean, I opened up the door to the refrigerator. It's colder in my apartment than it was in the refrigerator normally. You know? <laughs> You're right. Wow. You're right. <laughs> Now, wow. uh, 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 crazy. Uh, Some of the stuff did thaw out. Correct so me if I'm wrong. If I'm wrong on this, but it doesn't snow much in Texas. I think in the whole time I no, lived there, no, it can go five years without it snowing. I I I don't remember in the whole time I lived there it ever snowing. Yeah, you know, you guys are just not ready for snow. You don't. No, have, so we don't have any trucks, snow plows to plow the road. We don't have any salt to put on the roads. To we had a I little. Mean, we had a little snowfall here. You know. Uh, a couple of days ago, and then again today, and uh, even before the first flake drops, the goddamn snowplows are out on the street. Yeah. You can hear them scraping along the street. You know, they wake yeah. up in the middle of the night. But you guys, you don't even have the snowplows. You don't have nope. chains on your cars. No, nope. you, you're not ready for. You Snow don't even. Tires, have, you nope. don't even have the yeah. kind of uh, winter wear you should have. <laughs> no, I don't have any galoshes. I I, I had like eight inches of snow. I couldn't get to my car. <laughs> oh, God. The only way I had to charge my phone was to run my car. Yeah, we, we had eight inches here, and it was cleaned up really fast, you know? Yeah. And I, I showed people earlier outside my window, which I can uh, I can show again here uh, mm -hmm. if you, if you want to look at it. There's, there's a – you people can't see it, but there's the corner of 116th and 7th Avenue. Uh, there's a bodega down the street, which is now closed. That's where that flashing light is. And uh, there's a restaurant, and uh, it's... Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, that looks great. None of us can see it, though. But there's... Right. there's you know, well, I saw it before, you know, before yeah. you... There's, there's the snow. The that, that's what passes for snow here. So, you know, right. what the hell. But so anyway. I think snow was in Texas and mm -hmm. this huge storm mm -hmm. was God's way of punishing Texas for voting for Trump. It could be. It, <laughs> it, it, it could Obviously. Be. It could be. Uh, but I'm well, glad we, we, were, we were all worried about you. Everybody was going, how's mm -hmm. Charlie? Somebody wrote me, and, and I swear yeah. to you this is true. Uh, somebody I normally think of as being fairly smart, nobody you guys know, just one of the people who writes me for doing the show, and wrote me and, and said, how's Charlie? Uh, I suppose he doesn't have any electricity. Why don't you send him an email and find out? <laughs> that would have helped a lot. And I went, I went, I, I was thinking to myself, wait a minute, don't you think that maybe if he, if he has a, a, a no power, he also doesn't have the ability to get his email? Now your, your, yeah. I guess your iPhone, your iPhone maybe still worked, didn't it? It worked for for about a day until it ran out until of power. Until it ran out of power, exactly. <laughs> you know what you should do is get one of those little batteries, you know, those rechargeable things that you can put on there so you can at least get a couple of days the next time in 20 yeah, years. In 20 well, years when it that. snows like this again in Texas. <laughs> you know. Yeah, five, six years from now, yeah. And I hear, <laughs> I hear uh, uh, um, Jack Bishop on his program bragging about, well, we have solar power, so... You know, we still have power here. And I'm going, yeah. You know, the batteries, if you buy a couple, they're not expensive. Uh, an open whoever. And I got them all over the place. But I keep them in the car. You break down in the car. Say the battery dies in the car. Mm -hmm. And you got to, you need your cell phone. And you got to walk to the wherever. Yeah. Although everything's close in Texas and California. But you never know. Yeah. And so it's nice to have an extra battery. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is nice to have an extra battery. I don't know. I have. Uh, do I have any chargers here? Yeah, I have a thing over here I could use. Yeah, well, give me a full, full phone charge, and the battery's been in this thing for like the last two years, and I've never pulled it out to use it to charge up my phone. Now, uh, one so time I don't even I know. Tried if, to get, what? Put a battery in my phone. I couldn't get the phone open to put the battery in. Oh really? That was an older model of the iPhone. This yeah. is an accessory. It's. Uh, it well, looks like this. Well, it's like a jump. You know, and you just box. you charge it well, on one end, it. and then on the side you plug into your your charging ah, cable. Okay. The next this is, yeah, this is one of horrible. those batteries. Yeah, yeah. The ones that's that, what I need. I need a bunch of those. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. If you uh, and I'm serious, if you want to send me your uh, 
address or your whatever, I will uh, send them to you, no charge, free Christmas oh, gift no. from yeah, but Amazon. He's, but he's probably not going to need them for another 20 years. I know, now. I can say this. Well, he's got time to this, learn how to use them. This is what I have. And it, 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 it plugs in, and it's been in there for like three years. I don't even know if it could charge anything. But it's got, uh, it's got USB ports here, and it's got a charging port here so that I can just plug this into the phone, and it will charge the whole phone up. But let me go put sure. it back in its mm -hmm. resting place. Another thing I found is you have those flashlights that you plug into the outlet to charge. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any power, they run out. Mm -hmm. oh. yeah. So you you can't put a new battery in it. You just you just plug the cable from your smartphone into yeah. your smartphone, and then into this thing. Yeah. And it charges this battery. I'm sure they have them at Amazon. I'll just order from Amazon and get it. Tomorrow. Oh, they have hundreds of them at Amazon. Yeah. And they're like ten, twelve dollars a piece. And the, the ten thousand. Yeah, but you see, you're giving him advice on something he'll probably never need in his never lifetime. Again. That's why I don't have galoshes. You know, he, that's the reason they had trouble in Texas. They just weren't ready for it. You know, no, it's not something you you know. I mean, yeah, here we've got. I've got my boots, and I've got my warm jacket, and I've got all that stuff. You know, you're, and you're wearing it all right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Important thing you need: love, Brian. Right. The one that I have is about this big, a little bit bigger, uh -huh. and I can actually jumpstart my car with that. So I keep one in my customs. So how cold? How cold did it get, Charlie? Nine degrees Ooh. Sunday, uh, Monday morning and Tuesday morning. Nine there degrees. There you go. There's your jump starter. Yeah. I don't have it out of the box. I just got it as a gift. Oh. Yeah, we haven't a, been above freezing. Charge since your phone, or you can jumpstart the car. <laughs> You can jump I don't start. Know if it wait, actually works. Wait a minute, you can jump. Yep. Small. You can jump start a car with that thing. Yeah, yeah. The one that's a little bit bigger than the one he showed. I, I have yeah. a couple of those, and I have one in each car, especially my custom. Do so. they work? And I've I've used it. Yep, I used wow. it on my Lexus when I had my Lexus before. It works. And okay, then that's good to know because I just bought one for somebody. Cell phone like ten times over. Welcome. Yeah, I just bought one. They're like less than a hundred dollars. Welcome, folks, to Tech Talk. Yeah. You know. Uh, yes, Jeff. So I've been having problems oh. with. Yeah. I'm on, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're on. Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, been having problems with it, my Apple computer. So, cause I I got it wet myself. You got it, it wet? Like What'd you do? Wet. Pee on it or something? Or no, I was oh, okay. cooking and whatever. Wait a minute, you were cooking. Yeah, and I, I had the computer. Wait a minute, this may be better than you not being able to get our audio uh, off of going well, this, on the air. Well, you know, this was Wait. on my Apple computer, which normally well, works what, fine. What does that have to do with cooking? All right, well, the water the microwave leak. went inside the computer, which doesn't like water. Yeah, it doesn't like water. Yeah. But you know what? For the first three hours or so, it was working fine. I figured, man... You know, I kind of try to dry it and whatever. But anyway, after the three hours, it stopped. So being smart, I brought it to the Apple store. Mm -hmm. And the Apple guy goes, oh, no problem. You know what? It's uh, it's Monday. I'll tell you what. You'll probably have it done by maybe Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. Maybe Monday the worst. I won't mail it to you. Okay. I get there and Sunday, mm -hmm. no answer. Audio. I currently talked to him, and I finally I'm realizing talking to somebody in another country or whatever. Yeah, of course you're not. And talking. the guy says, "Well, okay." He says, "Well, you you your your thing's not done, and uh, but it'll probably be another week and a half." Okay. And I said. Well, you said it was going to be done in, what it was, six days or something? Yeah. And he goes, well, no. And I said, by the way, where is it? Where is my computer? It's in Texas. Oh, yeah, my, my, my whole machine here <laughs> went to Texas. Guess yeah, what? It's very great to get stuff fixed today all, with electric problems. All dead apples go to, go to Texas. Well, great where time. There's no electricity to fix them. Uh, yeah, you're right. 
You're right. I know. I'm totally screwed. Oh, God. You know what you probably should have done? Usually if, if your computer gets wet or your iPhone gets wet, you know what they tell you to do? Get an rice. air dryer. No, put it in rice. Put it in rice. rice. Yeah. yeah. Well, where would you put the rice? Inside you, in, the you take dry rice and you just simply drop it into dry rice. Now you're saying, why drop put it into dry rice? Well, because afterwards you have a nice snack. No, well, uh, uh, my my no, computer but, weighs about that makes sixty pounds and is pretty big, and that would be a lot of dry rice. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you the best thing about sending this thing to I've the, I've told the story before about sending this apple to their whatever goes on in Houston store <laughs> or Houston place is they they fixed it right and they sent it back and it still wasn't working. Initially, I paid four hundred dollars to have them put in. I think a new graphics board. And that didn't fix it. So they said, well, we have a, a rule here at Apple that if we don't fix it on that first try, it only costs you whatever you paid for the first try. So they send it down to Texas, and they work on it, and blah, 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 and it gets back to me, and I plug it in, and it's still doing the same goddamn thing it was doing before. So I take it back to the Apple store, you know, the genius bar. Still looking for a genius there. Haven't found one yet, but, you know... And I uh, say, it isn't working. They go, well, we'll have to send it back to Texas. The first time they sent it to Texas, they replaced about half the pieces, parts in the machine. The second time they sent it to Texas, they replaced almost every single part in the machine. The only thing that wasn't replaced, I think, was like uh, the main board where a lot of the plugs are. And that was it. Everything else, brand new. 100% brand new. I was like, they, I got a new computer, and I bought this thing from on eBay for three thousand dollars, you know, and it was like a nine thousand dollar machine. So now I got it fixed for four hundred dollars, and I got almost a brand new machine, nine hundred dollar machine, Zilcho, or for four hundred bucks. So, so for you, for you tech person, the big thing that everything plugs into. Mm -hmm. In the computer business, it's called the motherboard. No, and it's actually in this, it's called the logic board. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. It used to be called the motherboard. Oh, back back okay. in well, your day, you old go. man. Back in your old yeah. day, old man, it was called the logic <laughs> the board. The old thing. It was, it, it, well, it wasn't the logic board exactly. It was part of the logic board. Uh, it okay. wasn't replaced. But they replaced everything. Oh, graphics boards, sound boards, uh, all, all, everything. And this is in your iPhone? No, my, uh, my uh, Mac Pro. Oh, okay. My okay. big, my big uh, the garbage can. You know, oh, the, okay, the, yeah, okay. the trash can they called it. So. Hey, Jeff, next yeah. time you're cooking, you know, uh, take word from me, close the microwave door when you got water boiling, otherwise it could spill on the computer. Mm -hmm. Anybody here oh, had, anybody here had, oh, ter yeah. had terrible accidents in the kitchen? I spilled hot water on my laptop. No, we, really? We've never been cooking naked. Well, you know my story then. <laughs> No, I I'm mean, a big I fan, mean. Alex. I told you I know all your stories. But go ahead. No, Alex, we haven't ever <laughs> Well, what I was doing is I was making my famous Alex Bennett ribs in yes. the oven. Right? Famous ribs. And uh I was um um I was in the bedroom kind of naked because I was doing something that I probably don't want to describe here, but it had, had something to do with it. You know. Anyway. And all of a sudden, I said, oh, I better go check on the ribs. So I go into the kitchen. And mm. let's say I'm not tumescent. I'm the opposite of tumescent. Uh, I still have a... Not flaccid. Boner. Okay. <laughs> and I open up the oven, and I pull out the grill, and it touches the edge of my penis. Oh. That took three months to go away. Ow. Three months to go away. Ow. You gotta stop touching it or it's not gonna heal. Oh, you, you're right, exactly. <laughs> well, the worst part was is some nights I would sleep and I would sleep on my stomach and then it would adhere to the bed sheet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Am I being a little too, uh, how many people did we just lose on that story? Uh, <laughs> And it would, uh, I, I would turn over in my sleep and go, oh my God, you know, and I'm bleeding and it, it was terrible. This kind of went on for three months. But I, 
the first thing I did, here's the stupid thing. I, I didn't know what to put on it, so I figured butter. <laughs> That's the worst thing you can do with a yeah. burn because you baste it. Okay? <laughs> I basted my penis. <laughs> ice. You should put ice on it. If you put ice on it immediately, you may stop it from blistering if you get a burn. Mm. So, But I That's learned intriguing. now I can talk oh. in, in, in hindsight, you know. But... Uh, yeah. Hey, you know, I'm, uh, I'm, I have a, had a little scar on my penis, which was very nice. So you have a piece of ice in your underwear now? What? <laughs> or have a piece of ice in your underwear yeah, I always, now? No, I always keep a piece of ice around near, near the near the stove whenever I'm... No, I never do it naked anymore. I've learned my lesson. I learned my lesson. Hey, yeah. Alex. My, yes. Alex, what's, what's your thoughts on uh, Andrew Cuomo's uh, scandal? <laughs> it's got to do with cooking. <laughs> Let the show take it where it goes. <laughs> well, my wife, my wife, who is very political in nature and just absolutely is involved in all the things political, uh, was watching Cuomo the other day and had a very good comment about this whole thing. She said, I bet he's got a big penis. So that was her comment on, on this thing. Uh, uh, and, and then my big comment was, I agree, he probably does. Okay, all right. She was looking at his hands, because he always holds his hands up. Yeah. But anyway, uh, what do I think about uh, Cuomo? Well, you know, uh, he, was, he was handling this in a very, um, and I don't want to excuse his behavior, and he doesn't excuse his behavior. In fact, he owns up to it, you know? Um, uh, it, it, it was, but it was a very confusing time. What do we do? How do we handle this? What, what's the best way to do this? And, uh, uh, he made some mistakes. He made some mistakes where, uh, uh, the handling of people in nursing homes was concerned, but he was going by what was CDC recommendations at the time. And they didn't know what they were talking about either. And the CDC recommendation was, is that yes, if somebody is in a nursing home and they come down with COVID, you send them to the hospital. When they no longer have the COVID, you send them back to the, back to the nursing home. If the nursing home doesn't want to take them, you then find a place to put them, okay? So um, that was the general wisdom at the time. And I, I don't know that he was, the charge is that he underreported the number of people who had died as a result of COVID or had COVID or whatever. And he said he did it because uh, uh, he didn't want the Bush, uh, the Bush, the Trump people to kind of take advantage of, of his, uh, of it being too high, all right? Uh, and, and so it, it was a time when you didn't really want to have to do anything to get those people out in, uh, uh, down in Washington on your case, especially because they were ready to snipe at him in any way they possibly could, because he was very critical of them. So I don't know, you know, I think he was in a, between a rock and a hard place. I don't think this looks too good for him. Maybe he will slide through after a while. But, you know, he's got the FBI investigating him, and there's this guy who's a, 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 a state congressman or something, states, works in the state, uh, state house named Kim, who has been after him. A lot, he has a lot of political enemies who are just all piling on right now. Oh, let's, let's have a recall. Let's do this. Let's do that. Um, you know, yes, he did wrong, I think. You know, he was not as transparent as he should have been. Uh, will it uh, cause him a permanent problem? I don't know. What do you people think? Do people, you people, are you people aware of the situation? I you, think he's toast. You think yeah. he's toast, really? Really? Yeah. Uh, but what did he do that was wrong? Yeah. You know, it's one thing, like a typical politician, mm -hmm. they don't tell you anything. Yeah. Except he made the mistake of telling everybody everything. Except he did make one mistake. He started changing what he knew what he didn't know, and he kind of, he changed him a little bit. He 
He changed the story. A okay, bit. but if you're lying about, say, how many people, was it about how many people died or just how many people had it in the nursing homes? I don't know exactly, but I mean, people died. Yeah, yeah. But, but, <laughs> you know, but, but, and, and yeah. all he had to do was say, holy mackerel, you know, I didn't realize that the number of people uh, who've been dying were really from uh, the old people's home. Mm-hmm. And we have to readjust our our adjustments on numbers. Yeah. And, well, well and that, I mean, my, my, the, the, Trump would have never figured it out. It, anyway. Well, the point he made, the point he was making was, it doesn't matter if he misreported one person or ten thousand people; those people were dead anyway. They were dead. Okay, mm -hmm. and that's a loss. That's a complete loss. I think what people are bothered by is everybody was sitting around wanting to get him because he was the authority on how to be transparent, how to tell everybody what was going on, you know. Um, and uh, I think he set himself up for the fall in that because there were a lot of people just out to get him. And, and I, you know, I, I happen to... I, I, I like him, but I've been disliking him lately because I think he's handling the situation wrong right now. Mm -hmm. I think he's getting a little too loosey-goosey uh, and the numbers here are going down, but they're going down all over the country. All of a sudden, we've had a precipitous drop. I think we're down by two-thirds in the country on new cases. So that's a good sign, you know. Uh, and I don't think it has nothing to do with the, uh, with the vaccine because it hasn't been given out to enough people to be able to affect a real change. But, I, you know, so I don't know how to feel about him. I feel that the guy saved my life, you know, by by going on the air and telling people to wear a mask and running campaigns on television to wear a mask and to wash your hands and to keep social distancing and let's bring the curve down and every day getting on the air, giving the lecture, giving the he pep talk. At that. He was terrific at that. And in that respect, I think he saved my life and probably yours too, Jeff. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with you. You know, and so I, I can't be... I'm not that critical of him. I am critical of his current actions. I mean, I think that it, they're just opening it up to too many people when they don't even have the vaccine, you know. Uh, and rather than say now they go, oh, and, and, and uh, comorbidities and, uh, you know, then they went with the whole thing with teachers. Why weren't teachers the first to be covered along with, t with, uh, with hospital people? I mean, yep. what? Why do we suddenly say, "Oh, well, now teachers can get it too"? What? What? Oh. And then you're saying we aren't opening up the schools fast enough? Are you out of your goddamn minds? You know. So I mean, that that bothered me. You know. So. And all of my friends or my my kids mm -hmm. are working. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they're working at home. Yeah. Because they got no place to go. Right. And their kids are there too. You know, except for one day a week or some craziness. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a very unusual world. It is, and and I, but I, I, so I'm kind of. Does that answer your question, Steve? At all? Uh, you know, I'm. It's it's. He's done such a good job all along, but he did something wrong, and and I think it was at the beginning when. Hey, they just didn't know how to report this stuff. They didn't know why they wanted to report this stuff. And he claims he reported it. The the the, um, uh, the CDC or somebody, the federal government wanted numbers, and he gave them the, the the numbers. The state he held off on giving them the numbers and told them that he was putting them on pause for those numbers because he wanted to first get them out to the government. So he did report them. It wasn't that he didn't report the actual numbers, but you know, it's it, it's just. It's it's kind of sad. How, uh, yeah, yes, uh, Alan. Can we get back to cooking accidents? I have a story. Okay. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, well, I, I, I learned that when you take a frozen pizza out of the box and you put it in the oven for 45 minutes, when you pull it out of the oven to have shoes on because you're a lot better tossing a hot pizza with your hands than your bare feet. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you. It, it left burns on my feet. And yeah, the really? cheese. Of course, it had to fall out of the oven, cheese down on the feet. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. That was oh. terrific. That's God, that terrific. was not fun. 
Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's what you get for right. buy, buying frozen pizza anyway, I think. Or cooking in the yeah. nude, as somebody talked about. You know, I'm one of those rare people. I, I'm not that crazy about pizza. Uh, you know? My I'm wife, not crazy like, about burning my penis. So my wife, now we have no, something. No, with my, wife, <laughs> my, wife, my wife loves pizza, and she orders yeah. pizza a lot. And I just don't have it because, uh, number one, I don't like it because I try to diet most of the time. Uh, and I try to go low carb, and you you have one slice of pizza. It's mostly crust, yep. you know. And uh, uh, so I, I and I just never liked pizza because it's just got all that crust on it, you know. You got to go to the right place. Well, I mean, the New point York is, doesn't know how to make pizza. You got to go to Chicago. <laughs> Chicago knows how to do. Deep, they know how to do deep dish. Yeah. <clears throat> they just yeah. had uh, Stanley Stanley Tucci's first episode of uh, exploring Italy or something like mm -hmm. that with all the food. Yeah. And they were in Naples where they where pizza was, you know, invented. So they did the whole history of pizza there. And, oh, my God, I, I got to lose like 20 pounds before I go back. There. Well, pizza, <laughs> pizza, okay, pizza in Italy uh, isn't like it is in America. This is American pizza we have here, this round doughy thing with a, some, yeah. you know, with, yeah, with, with sausage pineapple. and pepperoni in New York and pineapple and strawberries in California. <laughs> yeah. By the way, just for you people out in California, there is no such thing as a vegetarian pizza. Okay? There's no such thing as a vegetarian pizza. Different states have different pizzas. No, they don't. There's only one kind of pizza. One that has lots of meat on it, lots of sauce on it, lots of uh, yeah. uh, uh, mushrooms and pepperonis and Nitrates sauce. And, right, and right, fat, right, right, Tony. Salt. You know, my grandmother's from Naples, and you know what? She, my father used to do it, and you know, she used to make her own pizza, which I still have the pizza thing, the pan downstairs. Yeah. And actually, you're right, Alex. The pizza she used to make was thinner. Oh yes, they used oh, to yeah. make thin crust. Really. When thin. I used to go over there she used to make a pizza, we used to go over there. Yeah. It was never like that, like heavy. It was always kind of like it was, you know, it wasn't super thin, but it wasn't as heavy as that where one slice it would bloat you up. Mm -hmm. And she yeah. always did put stuff yeah. on it, like, well, she would ask you what you want on it. But she made a thin pizza though. Yeah, yeah. The one, the one they showed Stanley Tucci from from there. The guy put it in there for forty five seconds, and it came out as so thin. What do you have the brick oven? Yeah, yeah. One of the small. Well, when I was a kid growing up, I grew up in uh, North Beach in San Francisco, which is an Italian neighborhood, or was an Italian neighborhood. Now it's a, Ch it's a Chinese neighborhood, but it was an Italian neighborhood. No, it's still Italian. So Italian that you would go is to it? my best friend's house, and his living room smelled like wine because in the basement they had their own wine vat that really? they made wine mm -hmm. in. But anyway, um, uh, the. Um, we used to get pizza there, and the pizza was thin. You, when you picked it up, you had to double it over. Yep. Otherwise, it would just flop down the other way, right? Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, along comes, like, I think it was Pinky's Pizza or something like that, and all these other things. And they were thick pizzas. And you're going, that's not, you know, that's not, that's not pizza. Uh, and I mean, yes, I agree. You can get some very good pizza. I'm just not crazy about pizza. I will scoop off the stuff on the top, eat that, and leave the leave the crust. You know, because I'm just not a big crust fan on that. But uh, you know, hopefully you scoop it off with your hand and not your penis. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. I, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I uh, pretty I mean, hot. Let me tell you. I should probably put out a cookbook called Cooking with Your Penis. Uh, and, uh, yes. Uh, Maybe you should. Yeah. No, that was it was it was it was a uh, how to how to how to how to flip pancakes with an erect penis. Well, yes, I didn't think about flipping it. <laughs> uh, next time use a paddle. You know That's right. <laughs> uh but anyway, so I mean, um um Getting back to what was going on, what do you think about the Cuomo thing? Tony, Tony, me and my brother were just talking. We were talking about that on the way to the supermarket, and mm -hmm. I don't know how much to believe. Like, did he threaten somebody's job? They were saying that's kind of leaking out. 
And you know, him well, no, that was it. that was this guy Kim who started going after him, saying he was gonna he was going to uh, uh, go for a recall of him and so on. And so he called up Kim, and you know, you don't want to get on on his bad side, okay? Because he's from he's he's Italian. He's from Queens. I mean, you see how he's, the brother is Chris Cuomo. It he, seems like he's you get these guineas. I'm telling you, Alex. He, I see them in my family. What do you mean you're a, you're a guinea? <laughs> And they don't let nothing. I see. I'm not like that. We would never. We would. My mother really never grew us up like that. Like certain parts of my family, like I don't really bother with them because they're just stupid. Like they're still fighting yeah, over things but, for but, twenty but, years. You know, you don't. I don't it's think. Like, I, don't, I don't think I'd want to get on the bad side of Cuomo and have and have to talk. Yeah, you're to right. Him. I think he has that bad attitude. Oh yeah, yeah. He's gonna go. Yeah, you, you try getting elected again. Yeah, you know. I mean that kind of thing. Yeah. You know. But you know, he, here's what bothers me though. It's like. He knew, he knew the numbers were wrong. And you're talking about people's lives. Like, they, they died. Now, you know you had failed. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree like with that. I agree with that, Tony. Kind of like, but really? let's let's agree with something here. They were dead already. They were, but... Yeah, to, so like, so coming up with a number true. isn't going to bring them back to life. But I would, he I think I think it's a it's disrespectful f- to the people who passed. It's not away. like he went to these old people at the old people's homes yeah. with rat poison and poisoned no. them. I think he know? made. The, I don't think. How about this? I told this to my brother because he said, "What do you think?" I said, "You know what I think? We don't know the whole story, but I think I could be wrong, Alex. When this happened, were there certain guidelines? Like maybe they didn't know where to put these people. Like should they put them on the boat? Should it, I mean, were there family members who could take them? Maybe there was just circumstances where they he felt the only place they can go was back in the home. Did they no, not no, know the, enough no, about the this was the, this was the suggestion of the CDC. Okay, so then he, he was should... working on CDC recommendations, but he said that if a nursing home said no, we don't want them in here because they've had uh, COVID, and a yeah. lot of these people, by the way, still tested positive for COVID because it while they were positive. while they were past having it. They still had, the, you know, they still tested positive for a little time after that. Am I right, Brian? You still can test positive after you've had it for a time, right? I don't think you're contagious, though, right, Brian? After a certain time. Come on, come on, mister. Yeah. I've got my little gadget here. Come on. <laughs> I keep this around here. I that's just... uh, uh, a penis bandage, right? That's right. From when you burn your penis. <laughs> no, it's a thing. You put, the, you put your penis in here, and I, I, I can put my penis in there. <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's not very big. It just fits. Just fits. It's very snug, but it fits. Uh, no, but the, this is he does testing things. Can't you still test positive after you've had it for a while? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But all I know is that what you had is you had hospitals that were really filled up. And yeah. they wanted to get rid of these people as fast as possible because they needed the beds. They were running yeah. out of beds. Mm-hmm. And 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 so the idea of getting them back to the nursing homes was the best idea. But he said, and he said this any number of times, we told these nursing homes that if you couldn't take these people, if you couldn't afford, you know, if you didn't want to take these people, uh, we'd find a place to shelter them. You know, even if it meant the state had to put them up in hotel rooms or whatever, we, we'd shelter them. Uh, and that all the all the nursing homes said, sure, we'll take them back, you know. So um, that was one of the arguments. But it, why he the the argument against him is that he fudged the numbers, right? That he just wasn't giving the correct numbers. Yeah, I don't think he was correct. How many really? How many? Like he I mean, knew how many. It was more. So than does this mean that Cal- California is ahead of us now? Is behind? Is not? Is behind us now again? Does it mean I that? Think, I think also would have been a big distraction because, you know, Trump would have jumped on that and Trump just would have ridden that and be like big distraction, yeah. you know, attack, attack Cuomo while all this other stuff is going on to distract everybody. Yeah, well, that's yeah. what he that's what they were also worried about. Yeah, you know, that makes sense. You know, and yeah. Trump would never do that. No, <laughs> Trump would never do that. Uh, let me see. Three, here, three million people at his inauguration. <laughs> Do I have uh, the uh, the numbers here? Let me just see here for a second. Here we go. Here are the latest numbers. And look, I can even do it now very nicely. Um, um, this is um, um, these are the numbers right now. Worldwide, 110 million people have had COVID. 2,441,112 uh, uh, have died on the face of the earth. More parking spaces for the rest of us. 
Uh, also, we have uh, the U.S. is number one with 493,082 deaths. We're going to we're going to hit a uh, half a 500,000 by Monday. They say that by Monday. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty close. Uh, we are number two, one. Brazil is number two with 243,457 deaths. Uh, we've had 27,000 cases, almost 28,000 cases in the United States. And uh, if you look here, folks, um, there it is. Uh, there's India with 10,000, 10, 10,950,000. It's 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 terrible. The United States is in better shape now, but in deaths, California is at forty-eight thousand two hundred and eighty-three. New York is number two at forty-six thousand four hundred and thirty-six. Now I don't know if we're adding in the maybe eight thousand or so that weren't counted before, and then uh, uh, you get down to uh, oh Texas, Charlie. Yeah, forty-one thousand. We're, we're coming. 41,630 deaths. So, you know, you guys are uh, slowly uh, coming up on uh, on us. So that's, that's pretty good. People will die of the cold and they're going to say it was COVID. So you're going to get right. a coming up pretty, pretty soon. Numbers up. What, is, what, is, what, what, what is this? This is my test positive for COVID. So when I'm an old man, I can say I beat the disease. I never told my mom I tested positive because I don't want to worry. Did you get it? Did you come down with yeah, it? I, I, I had it. I actually, I told you when I tested positive on the 31st of December. Yeah, okay. I had a slight, like I, I had like a little cough, but mm. nothing out of the ordinary, but. Yeah. Did you go to that New Year's party after that? Uh -huh. No. <laughs> I stayed home actually. I mean, actually, I mean, to tell you the truth. You probably got it from your mother. I got it from my sister. I didn't, yeah. yeah. And I still can't get over that. We never told well, her. Well, what you get from tongue kissing your sister. <laughs> so she, got over she, she felt bad but it's like you said Ox, it's just kind of Those like Italians you can't tell yeah yeah I mean at least at least I know how to cook the meatballs I know I know I actually remember her recipes yeah so I'm kind of good about that yeah yeah so you sure it wasn't your sister's tongue no just kidding I know hey, but, uh, yeah I'm gonna save this just in case when I drop I could say I beat this this is a memory of Trump the memory oh, of Trump. Yeah. yeah. Memory of Trump. I would get it framed. I should. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I should. yeah. Put it back. Memories like the funeral. Yeah. I don't know. My memory of Trump is a an orange turd in a toilet bowl. I should take a picture of that and get it. I don't know. Never yeah. mind. <laughs> Never mind. You're we the only one on this panel that voted for that turd. So remember that. Thank you. <laughs> and you're the only person tonight who's mentioned him. Isn't it nice that people remember me by what I voted for? Oh I think God. the only the only time I mentioned him tonight was in reference to Cuomo, that he didn't want yeah. to do it because of the Trump administration. But you know, I'd like to just forget the man ever existed. Okay, you know, and, and get on. No, yeah. <laughs> oh, Trump. Trump. Okay. You know, I mean, I think it's time for us to, you know, kind of move on. Him. Move on. Get on with our with the thing. Well, after I voted for him and he turned into a real idiot, I'm a, I was unhappy that I voted for him. Why? So. Did, why? Can I ask you though? Why did you vote for him? In the yeah, first that's well, place? because you, you I, seem far. Okay, too so so like Phil, I'm a mm -hmm. pro Second Amendment person, and the Democrats are not pro Second Amendment or pro gun rights. Mm -hmm. And so, I, I read Biden's eight page 16 page something thing that he how he was going to change the gun rights in the country mm -hmm. and i didn't like that and uh, a few other little minor things about biden and i thought well you know we got this idiot in the in the country uh he he did some good by feeding some money to the pharmaceutical companies to get the vaccines out sooner mm -hmm. he did a few good things so i don't know um not that my vote really matters in california Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you vote Republican here, it doesn't make much, it's a throwaway vote, but I was just voting my conscience and I felt that it was the right thing to do. But, you know, when he turned into the it seems stolen to me, election, though, it seems to me, though, you were like a one issue voter. You know, the nah. guns, guns meant so much to you that, yeah. you know, you weren't going to take a chance on the other guy thinking your guns were going to be taken away from you, which clearly is not the case. Clearly, 
Yeah, we don't know. Have you read HR one twenty seven yet? No. But don't you hear that? Don't you hear that every election though? Don't you hear that? Hey, don't vote for Democrats because they're going to take your guns every year. Every yeah, election yeah, is like that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, you know, look. I mean, you've heard me talk for months now, or whatever I've been here, and the only bad thing I did was vote for Trump. Um, Trump. No, I know, I know. But but as an active gun owner, I mean, that it, it's oh. always boggles my mind when I hear these guys. You know, not just loyal gun owners, but other people. Oh, they're well, going to take your guns away. Oh, they're I, gonna I, take I'm not worried person. about the government taking my guns like a lot of the staunch mm. Republicans or or whatever. I'm worried about the you know, uh, like like one of the things in this HR 127 bill is that you're any parts that you want for the gun that you already own, you're going to have to get them through a gun dealer. You can't order them from. Mm -hmm. Walmart or online, and I'm talking about a spring or some stupid little thing, not something, you know, just just something to keep it going. I mean, would you like if uh, to me, it's kind of like, you know, the, the government saying for now on out, I own a Ford for now on out. You have to get your parts, mm -hmm. any part, tune up repairs from a Ford dealer only. And that's kind of the the way I look at some of this stuff. I mean, a lot of this stuff we already have in California, the 10 round magazines, background checks. I think background checks are super important. And there are places I'll pick on Texas for a minute. There, Texas has got very liberal gun laws. Mm -hmm. And in Texas, you could walk in, pluck down your money, walk out with a, a quote, assault rifle or a semi-automatic rifle or whatever you want to call the thing, uh, ammo and everything. And, you know, in as long as it takes to do the paperwork in California, there's a 10 day waiting period. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you fill out the paperwork, you buy the gun, they feed it to the feds and they give you a thumbs up or thumbs down and uh, you go pick up the gun 10 days later. And I think that ought to be that way across the nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a, you know, it, I, I don't, don't, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I think that, uh, you know, I'm not as, I'm not. I'm certainly not as pro gun as a lot of Republicans are. I mean, I'm yeah. pro gun because I own guns because I enjoy firing them. Um, I, I like having the the security of having one in California for protection of my personal self or my friends or my something like that. Uh, but you know, and, and and I've got training, obviously. And, and I don't think Democrats are are you know they're not against that stuff. Okay. You know, they they're against the the people that are, like the Texas example. You know, walking in yeah. or getting it any way you can. It's like that's yeah. unbelievable. Well, in some states, gun shows you can do the same thing, and they're going. And the Democrats are trying to stop that, and I'm I'm for stopping that. I think you mm. ought to have a background check. The background yeah. check's not perfect. I yeah, mean, in some say, states like California, we've given nut jobs guns. You know, after they did the background check, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I, it's just I, I, I wonder, the, you know, I, I don't think I would ever vote for somebody on one issue alone for or against somebody on one issue alone. It's a uh, strong feeling. You know, it, it's a strong feeling, but I think it's being exacerbated by pro-gun people who are scaring you into thinking that we're just going to mm -hmm. yank those guns away from you. I'm not you know? worried about that. And, and we're not going to. You know, I mean, I, I realize that guns are so firmly entrenched in this country that nothing, I mean, I would love to just do away with all guns tomorrow. Goodbye. Take them away from me. Good, you know, get them out of there. Get them oh. out of people's hands. So See, goodbye sorry. to the First Amendment, well, too? Let, 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 me, let, me, let me finish what I'm saying here. Okay. Uh, and I don't believe it's the First Amendment, is it? Sorry. Second, well, it's the second, second amendment. amendment. Second <laughs> amendment, the first amendment. So far as because... your guys are concerned, there's no other amendment but that one. Yeah. But uh, uh, you know, but I, I'm I'm reasonable enough to know that we're never going to do that. And yeah. um, um, uh, I, you know, I would I would like to hope that we could perhaps start a mentality in this country that would keep people from. Uh, uh, using guns and buying guns in such huge amounts and make them kind of déclasse make them make it like oh you've got a gun why you're old fashioned by owning a gun you know i mean we did that we did something that was smoking okay you know how many people smoke today don't smoke today because 
quite frankly, they, they know it's bad for them. And secondly, if you smoke, people go, I mind if you smoke. You know, don't smoke in here. Don't smoke there. So we managed to curb a, a behavior by creating an atmosphere of negativity about the use of that particular uh, substance. I think we could do the same thing with guns. I don't think we need to outlaw them. I think we could make them déclassé. We could make them owning a gun kind of, oh, you own a gun? You know, that kind of thing. But we haven't gotten to that point. But I would rather see change in that area done that way than done by legally trying to stop them. Uh, I think there's still some question as to whether the Second Amendment does protect gun ownership. It, it, uh, I maintain, along with a lot of other people, that it refers to a collective uh, right in order to maintain a war, well-ordered militia, blah, 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 blah. It, right. It's a cumulative right. Yes, uh, Charlie. Yeah, one of the bad laws in Texas is they made it legal to open carry in a bar. You're sitting there drinking, getting drunk off your ass, and you can have a gun on your hip. Yep. Yep. I'm sorry, I don't see the necessity for that. Uh, yep. Your ex-girlfriend at the other end of the bar. Let me mention yeah. something, too, to Charlie, that when I lived in Texas and I was doing radio and I would occasionally have to do the news, they on Monday said, don't report the deaths in bars because of people shooting mm -hmm. each other. That's not news in Houston. That's just, <laughs> no, that's everyday. That's everyday behavior. Yes, John Larkin had his hand up. John? Yeah, I, I was reading that there's a loophole in the Constitution where it makes it legal to murder somebody in a certain part of Yellowstone National Park. Because, um, <laughs> yeah, it's true. Look it up on the Internet. Yeah. Uh, there's there's a, the, the Sixth Amendment guarantees you the right to a jury trial by a local jury in your district or something like that. But when they when they made when they drew the boundaries of Yellowstone National Park, it's mm -hmm. all federal property. Part of it is on Idaho. Part of it's on Wyoming. And part of it's on, uh, what's the other one? Montana. Mm -hmm. And there's a part in, Ida in, in Idaho. If you shot somebody there, you couldn't get a jury trial. So technically, you know, it, you, you couldn't be tried. So, hmm. yes. Uh, uh, but it's, it's just theoretical. I'm sure they yeah. still try you. Alan? So it's illegal to murder anybody in this country. That's one. Yeah. Going back to Charlie, the open carry thing, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that most people, and especially me, do not think that a civilian needs to walk in to a bar, a bank, uh, you know, something like that with an open carry. I think open carry mm -hmm. is inviting trouble. Yeah. Uh, that's, I think if you're going to give a concealed weapon permit, that's a different story. But here again, I don't think you need it in a bar. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah. Texas is much more liberal than a lot of the places in the country. Um, New York, you'd never be able to carry open carry. I mean, you're lucky to be able to own a gun in New York mm -hmm. City. Yeah. yeah. You know, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, well, I remember in Texas, at least back in the day, that you could carry a gun on your side as long as yeah. it was not hidden. As long as it was yep. seen, it was on your right. on your hip. And um, uh, there was another law that was really a stupid law, and that is you couldn't transport a gun from one place to another. Uh, you couldn't transport a gun in your car. It couldn't be in your car unless you were transporting it from one place to another. <laughs> I swear, am I right, Charlie? Yep, that that's was, true. That was the law, unless it, it was... You know, you were transporting it from one place to another. With you, you, okay, so uh, why do you have a gun in your car? Oh, I'm taking it home. Well, why do you have a gun in your car? I'm taking it to work. Why do you have a gun in your car? I'm taking it to the restaurant. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, were, just, were bullets like that too? Bullets? Yeah, yeah well, you, you can kill somebody, but you, as long as you were transporting a bullet from one point to another. Well, I right. often said I don't think we should make guns illegal. We should make the bullets illegal. <laughs> They're trying that too. It's a lot harder to make a bullet, I think, than to make a gun. Am I right, uh, uh, Alan? I, you know. Oh, I don't know. A, a gun's made by machines and by hands. A bullet's made by machines. I don't know if one's harder than the other. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, you know, when when Obama was in office, he tried to get 
um, laser printed serial numbers on every bullet that was sold in this country. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea how fun that would be? And that was supposed to slow down the murder rate. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I don't. Because you could tell who did it. I don't. Uh, I don't see how. Um, first of all, most of the murders are done by gangs and drug dealers and stuff like that. They they're not going to buy bullets during you know in, go to the local <laughs> sporting goods store or wherever and buy bullets. They're going to buy them illegally or anything. Yeah. So those so those uh, 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 you know burned on things are not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Bullets, bullets, when they get into a, a body, a, a person, uh, an animal or something, they fragment most of the time unless it's real high ammo, mm -hmm. real, you know, like law enforcement ammo or something. And so, yeah, you might have part of a serial number here and part of it you never can find. I don't understand how that would lower. That was, you know, and but the Republicans, Republicans, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. the Democrats have brought that back up again. They want to try and put serial numbers on bullets again so they can trace it back to whoever bought it but that doesn't do any good either yeah you know the person that bought it didn't commit the murder hello ray renati ray renati looks oh, and he, oh he's now he's putting a background on himself oh. there yeah oh yeah. yeah hey yeah i just bought myself a green screen but i haven't used it yet it's just sitting back here i don't know uh -huh. what i'm going to use it for but i i don't want to use it on the show because just too much you know? yeah you know. um, there's Rocky. Where, where's Rocky? Oh, there's oh, Rocky. Rocky. Hello, Rocky. Hi, Rocky. He's Hi, in boy. a bad mood. He's in a bad mood? Yeah, he's growling. Oh, you mean he's growling what, at you? Yeah, he's grumpy. He spent three uh, weeks with me in the truck, and he says, as soon as he walks in the house, he looks at me, you again? Fuck off. Oh, wow. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I, I think he overheard Alex is burning his penis thing, and the dog's worried about that. Wait, wait. He likes it better in the truck than at home? Oh, he likes mommy butter. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah, she's at work. Yeah. Hey, so, is Jack okay? Is Jack underwater? No, Jack's fine. Jack's been doing a show every night. Oh, yeah. okay, good. Yeah. He's nice and Charlie's night. okay. And Charlie's cool. okay, thank God. We were yeah, all no. worried about Charlie, but we had no way to get a hold of him. So, you know. Nope. Uh, and One of us got a hold of him. We had a way to get a hold of him. But he couldn't get a hold of us. <laughs> you right. know, and you, in this weather, you could get frostbite, and he can't afford to lose many more toes. <laughs> you know, so. <laughs> should have never worse, said it. I can't feel hot and cold in my feet. Oh, so really? I could be out there in the snow and freezing my toes off, and I even know it. Yeah, well, wow. I could be You're lucky. I wouldn't call that luck. <laughs> I've got neuropathy in my feet, but it makes them oversensitive as opposed to yeah, undersensitive. Yeah, that's, that's the first symptom yeah that's the first symptom first yeah. symptom yeah. right before your toes fall Just off before your yeah, that toes was me fall. 10 years ago no my doctor right. my doctor told me i i don't have diabetes so my doctor told me this isn't the kind of neuropathy in your feet that make gonna make you lose your toes or anything like that but it's just annoying you know hey hey folks i'm getting old anyway um i shot a real commercial today finally after oh, so many really for chevy yeah wait wait oh, really yeah. What did you play? Local? Huh? What did you Is play? I was a, I was a baseball coach and a soccer coach, and I had to hit batting practice for like an hour, and I can't I can barely walk. <laughs> I swear to God, I can barely walk. Is My it wife was local? Like, no, no, it was a national. Oh, really? Right. How did you get that gig? Uh, did... I, you know, I I put in for it and on the casting thing here, and I just got cast. I have a feeling someone did me a. A solid as they say mm. and i don't even know who it is wow yeah, the only yeah. commercial i ever got was because i knew the person who was producing the commercial you know i think it was something like that uh but i don't know who it was mm -hmm. hmm. so somebody I just... did a uh a taco bell commercial uh um what do you call it no, i didn't get the commercial but i did the uh what do they call that the audition, audition? yeah they wanted me to sting sing this stupid song but um, you get a lot Chihuahua? of money to get one of those things. I mean, aren't they? I mean, if it's a national. Well, because I'm in the I'm in the Screen Actors Guild. I have an agent and everything. And yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people around here. I guess He's a real actor. <laughs> yeah. I was in a uh, 
I was in a film with two in a scene in a movie with two Academy nominated actresses and me in the scene. You oh can yeah, see what was it? Internet. It was a movie called Techno Lust, and the actresses were Karen Black and Tilda Swinton. Oh, oh wow. it's a horrible movie. Nobody's ever seen it, but um, <laughs> check it. You can look it up on the internet, and um, I got an IDB thing for it. IMDb. Oh, yeah. IMDb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty good actresses. Yeah. I know. Yeah. You know, two two Academy Award winners and yeah. me. <laughs> I didn't have a line. It was it was like this future science fiction movie, and I was playing like a a San Francisco cop entering. Yeah, but this is a pretty good deal though for for Ray because it pays uh, pays pretty good. The commercial, a national commercial, right? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. And they I only and, worked like four hours. And, so. and 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 you get paid every time it's played the first time out or something. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. So you mm -hmm. can make a nice bu bunch of bucks on that. Mm. You, know? you can depends yeah. how much they play it. Yeah. Uh, well, just tell us when to look for it or what the commercial is, and you know. Okay. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll be, I'll go out and buy a Chevy just because you're in the commercial. How's that? I think I wasn't oh, supposed to tell one. you it was Chevy. Oh, well, I got, I remember now they're going to take it away. Take that guy off. Yeah. I got an email saying, don't tell anybody, don't post it. And now I just said, oh, well, uh, well, you just told millions of people. Right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. All 45 people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, plus us, 45 plus 9. 40, 42 people, plus, oh. uh, plus the audio people. Let's see, oh, no. how many people do we have on the audio? Oh, Maybe God, what did I keep my mouth shut? Oh, 3,000 people on the audio. Oh, crap. No, no it's only 11. Oh, oh okay, good. <laughs> so a total of 50 people know everybody is listening right now. Don't tell anybody, Okay. <laughs> Now I don't think we've we've hurt your. Uh, no, no, your it's so funny though. They get so secretive about money this stuff. early. Why really? would they be so secretive Why? about that? Want people to buy the cars? Yeah. No, I think because they don't want comp they don't want like Ford to know or you know Ford to know they team. hired Ray Renati. <laughs> no, not me, not me. That they're, that they're actually doing the commercial. Hey, listen, oh, we know. don't want Ford to find out we hired Ray Renati because then they don't want to put Ray Renati in his, his their. Ad. Yeah, like um, everybody yeah, like such a known. Ray. Such yeah. a known entity, entity that you know. Yeah, yeah. forget about. <laughs> just that forget, I'm unknown. Forget That's about perfect. getting Samuel L. Jackson. We've got Ray Renati. Yeah, right. <laughs> <You know. laughs> They're gonna be like me hitting a couple balls and then Morgan Freeman over the top with the, yeah. with the, <laughs> the thing riding through the hills. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. I swear to God, car commercials are the easiest things to make on earth. <laughs> With the crew, I mean, they have like trucks and trucks of cameras and everything, you know. You know, you can actually uh, shoot that commercial with a GoPro, but no, I know. but no, they've got to, <laughs> yeah, they, they've got to have the food truck and the catering yes. and the twenty thousand people doing this and the twenty thousand people doing that. There had to be a hundred and fifty people there. There were probably more people there doing that commercial than do the average television film television show. Wow. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, they have a budget, right? They, they have a budget, be. so they're going to use it. Well, I'll tell you, the outhouses had hardwood floors <laughs> oh. <laughs> and flowers and flowers. Wow. wow, set up like a funeral parlor. I didn't even want to leave the place. I was just like, I'm staying in here, man. It's, it's nice too, this, warm. Is, this is too nice. Well, Hard anyway, so you, at least you got some work. That's good, you know. I know. I know. I was just, you know, I had just written to my agent, too. I was like, what the hell? What's going on? That and 10 more commercials, and you get SAG after a health. <laughs> you know? uh, really? Well, I was getting my equity health, which is just like that for years, and now I'm not getting that. And, man, you, you get spoiled when you get that. Well, I health. got spoiled, because, but they did away with ours over at SAG after it. So, you know, our, oh, really? our, our senior benefits, yeah. Where oh, we were sucks. paying what uh, uh, total of about four thousand dollars a year, and we just got all heck of kind of insurance. Great oh, that's insurance. right. Great yeah. insurance. And they just one day they said we're not going to do it anymore. Oh yeah, that was a big scandal. Oh, a few months ago. Well, today Marjorie got a call from the union saying we want to know how you're doing. You know? <laughs> and she said, well, well, not well. We're having to pay more money for our insurance and blah blah blah. And you people did a terrible thing to us. And the woman on the other end of the line, who I'm sure is not a, a union representative, said, yeah, we're being sued a lot over this. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there and, are a lot and of SAG suits. And SAG-AFTRA is a lot of money, too. That's just... 
There's a lot of suits out there. Well, it's sag, it's sag, after it's SAG, yeah, for years was known as having the best medical plan of any union in the country. And then yeah. when AFTRA joined them, we got the benefit of that. Yeah. And and we were it was terrific. It was just wonderful. I mean, imagine we paid like two thousand uh, four thousand a year, which your company paid for. And uh, both of us had full, were fully insured, and we had the, 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 the prescription plan was incredible and all of that. And all of a sudden, one day, they just come and yank it out from underneath us three months before they're going to stop it. So we only have three months to go out and get other arrangements for our, you know, our stuff. <coughs> it wasn't good. What good's the union anymore? What? What good is the union well, anymore? Yeah, what good is the union? When, you, when your worst enemy is now a union. Yeah. So anyway, I have to announce that tonight I did something for tonight's show. Is I, I took my other go uh, my other uh, uh, camera. Uh, uh, yeah, a, a Brio camera that I had over here for the other machine and put it over here so that I'm running that on the Zoom and the other one is running on my on my OBS. And tonight it looks pretty good. It looks like we're not really. You're closer than you normally are. No, I mean, we're, well, no, that that I've changed a bit, but that has nothing to do with the Brio. Uh, and no delay. Huh? Yeah. And no delay. And no delay. No delay. No delay. So I'm, you know, so now I'm going to have to go out and spend eight, uh, two hundred bucks, and buy another one of these cameras. So I have one for Ooh. both machines and two for this one. But it it looks pretty good. And it's working okay. No, I changed uh, how close my face is because I decided all your faces were about like this, and I was sitting there with you know, way back here, and it just look looks better. I think all the way around. I think so too. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Plus, we're sending this thing out at uh, 2K, not at four, not at 4K, but at 2K, and the picture just looks extraordinary, just yeah. extraordinary. So yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, it's it's really uh, you know. I, I look better. I'm okay with that. Oh, yeah, <laughs> and you can see the bags under my eyes better than you used to be able to see them. Oh, okay, there you go. Wear glasses. And, and I, know, I know, so you could see if you look closely, my eyelashes. Well, I cut them today, but they were they were going all cattywampus and everything. My eyebrows, but now that's okay. Oh, and, thank God for and, that. And, and 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 Rocky looks better than he's ever looked. Uh, Steve, he's not even wearing a hat. Oh, wait a minute, that's Trucker Steve. And we're, uh, <laughs> No, that's not Rocky. That's Trucker Steve over there. Right. Please. Um, Sidekick. Yeah. Oh, he's going for a haircut this weekend. He's going for a haircut? Yeah, he's a month and a half behind, too, because of the lockdown. I couldn't take him. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't dogs just shed and you don't have to cut their hair? Oh, he's, she's, uh, he's um, hypoallergenic, so he doesn't shed. Really? Yeah, my dog, so too. Have, I have to get a haircut. He has to go to a groomer. Hmm. You have to get them haircuts. Yep. Mm -hmm. Really. Otherwise, the big, big, giant balls of like cousin it. <clears throat> I wonder what kind of magazines they have in the waiting room there for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Why you're waiting? Play dog. Wait. Oh, that's good. <clears throat> uh, I usually go come back home because they'll have them for like three hours. Whoa. Yeah. Ah. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah. It takes about two and a half, three hours to trim them. Yeah, well, I bet they they don't have a COVID problem over there because uh, all dogs don't uh, give COVID to people, or do My they? My mom used to get the well, dog. pet store was uh, closed for the lockdown too. Couldn't couldn't take him. I haven't been to. He hasn't had a trim since uh, early December. Well, I haven't gotten trimmed since early December November. either. Oh, that's something else. <laughs> Hey, listen, there's a theme. Uh, Charlie Wallace, so good to see that you're okay, you know, and that you got the electricity back on. At least I assume those aren't candles. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Trucker Steve, glad to see you're off the road and Bye -bye. safe yeah. at home uh, with, the, with, the, with the dog. Uh, Alan, good seeing you tonight. Good seeing you, Jeff. Hey. Oh, look hey. who's here. Hello, Adrian. Goodbye. How are you? How, how are you? He's no. not shy She's anymore. So cute. Hi. And, uh... uh <laughs> <laughs> She's adorable. Oh She's my so God. adorable. Oh, there we go. She's doing the shy thing. Oh, uh, 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 oh man, uh, he's gonna be in trouble. Uh, Tony, Tony, you could do the same thing. You could do huh. that. <laughs> there you go. John Larkin, thank you so much. Uh, great to see you again. And Ray, we're glad to hear you got some meaningful work. Tell us what thank it's you. Like. Tell yeah. us what it's like to work soon, and we can all uh, find out because we forgot. 
anyway. Jeff has yeah. been quiet this what? half hour. I don't think he realizes he's got his mic off. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, hey, Adrian, yeah, good talking. night. Everybody wave goodbye, okay? And I'll wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go. That's our, uh, that's our, uh, that's our, our uh, uh, group of people for tonight in the Citizen Panel. Uh, that's it. Uh, we'll be back again here tomorrow night. Uh, next is uh, Jack Bishop, and he's here with the intersection. He'll be taking your calls on Skype, and GabNet Live is his uh, address to call on. Uh, I'll be back in tomorrow night. Uh, let's see here. 1030. Same time. Same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there. Wear a mask and get vaccinated. Bye-bye, everybody. Good night. <laughs>